through the nation after occupying Warsaw. The Soviet Union occupied quietly the extreme eastern half of Poland and met at the Vistula River. And the nation that we know of Poland that existed in 1939 by the October of that year ceased to exist. It was now Western Ukraine to Joseph Stalin and to Adolf Hitler, it was general government. And what happened to that, uh, that it positioned those two armies, there was no longer the Polish buffer between these two very aggressive nations. Uh, and of course, after 1939, Hitler turns into tensions back to the West, afraid that England was going to beat him to the, the Norwegian fjords and the opportunities to launch commerce raiders out of there. Uh, Hitler invaded uh, Denmark in April of 1940 and Norway. The uh, possibilities of bottling up the German fleet in the blockade like World War I had just become much more difficult for the British home fleet. In the summer of that year, in 1940, uh, June and July, the Hitler turns his attention to the two nations and that now declared war against Germany after invading Poland. And Germany invaded the Low Countries and France. And by July of 1940, all of France, Luxembourg, um, ne the Netherlands, and Belgium were now part of the German occupation area. With that point, with Italy now as part of the Axis, along with Japan, into the north, you've had Finland, which became uh, an ally of Germany, not part of the Axis, because in 1939, when Germany was busy getting the forces moved back to the west for the invasion of France, Russia attacked and occupied a good portion of Finland. Finland now called that the Winter War, and to keep that in mind, what the proportion it is, unfortunately, since we're in a more rustic environment, I don't have my PowerPoint presentation to click through the maps and charts to give you an idea of what I'm describing here. Um, imagine, if you will, the state of um, Texas invading Rhode Island. That is what you had when you had the Russia attacking the tiny nation population-wise of Finland. Finland, of course, after in, by the almost improbable odds, spent three to six months holding the Russians at bay at the Mannerheim Line, just north of St. Petersburg. Currently, uh, the then was known as Leningrad. But ally it became an ally, and all Finland wanted to do was regain the lost territories it lost in 1939. So in the spring of 1940, or 1941, I should say, uh, the entire German army, except for three divisions in North Africa under Erwin Rommel, was on occupation duty. The only nations that were not under German sway or allies was the two nations in the Iberian Peninsula of Portugal and Spain. You have neutral uh, Switzerland and neutral Sweden. All the rest of the country from Warsaw West was under German sway. This is the great fear of the French and the British that containing German aggression had been gone. They now occupied almost two-thirds of the Western European landmass, and this was really getting out of, almost out of control. Uh, that left one uneasy ally to the east that Hitler, in his Mein Kampf days writing his book, decided it was time to settle the great uh, area and make German, Germany truly economically independent. Because a Germany with access to the Russian raw materials and Russian space and Russian population would truly make Nazi Germany totally independent and no blockade would be able to suppress it. Just imagine with efficient German management, not only Western Europe, but all of uh, Western European Russia under their, under their control. It was a really ugly specter, and really it, it quite woke up to uh, Churchill especially, was really concerned about that. So in December of 1940, Hitler uh, uh, issues um, his directive number 41 to begin the planning of the invasion of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, currently known as Russia. Uh, again, I wish I had the uh, preparatory maps, but there was a lot of give and take about how, how uh, they should advance into Russia because they had two other previous examples. I mentioned earlier uh, the Swedes in the 1500s, the French in 1812, and the blueprint of how not to screw up a Russian invasion was already written there in those two invasions. And what you will find out if you go through the read the rest of the entire German experience or adventure, you might say, in Russia for the four years, they ignored every and remade every mistake that the Swedes and the French did. It's almost ironic that with two excellent blueprints to follow of what not to do, the Germans did it. So it's, they really have their own themselves to blame. Of, uh, but not only that, but you keep in mind, the United States here, we have four time zones. And we're a fairly big nation. 
Russia has 11. Wow. It's an astonishingly large country. It's the largest landmass, with the exception of China and on the far, uh, far eastern area, on the planet. And you have a nation the size of Montana deciding to attack and invade it and occupy it. It's really, it's, a num it's, an, it's an area of World War II, the Eastern Front, of numbers, time, and size, which, without looking at tables and graphs and charts, is almost uh, difficult to comprehend. And that's why I spent most of my time doing is crunching through uh, a lot of those numbers of numbers of tanks, numbers of square hectares or square miles, square kilometers, and trying to put it in an understandable, logical storyline format that it would be, could be understandable to the, to the average reader. So I'm hoping that's what I accomplish with, uh, with this work here I finished today. So in uh, June, I, on 20, June 22nd, 1941, to um, everyone's disbelief, because remember in, in August of 1939, prior to the invasion of Poland, Germany and Russia signed a non-aggression treaty to the astonishment of the, of the world's nations that the arch enemies of both communism and national socialism were now allies? That is, you talk about spinning everything that had to be changed on all the print media about who was the enemy and who was not the enemy. It was quite an astonishing feat, but what they were doing was assign, basically agreeing to an agreement of convenience from both sides. Hitler needed to worry about a non-aggressive Russia at his back while he took care of the operations he was planning in the West against France and Great Britain in Scandinavia. And Stalin desperately needed time to finish his reorganization of the, the Red Army, as well as finish his purges that he was doing of the political and the military, as well as um, uh, occupy and reinforce his new border, now 300 miles further west than the original Russian border on the Stalin line. You might say the entire Russian Red Army had been pushed for the further west and now held sus itself suspended in an area it did not, was not familiar with. The population didn't want them there, and the military was unfamiliar with the terrain as far as defensive positions that had to be established. What they were really hoping, uh, Stalin was really hoping for, is, and he was gleefully almost to the point when Germany attacked France and, and, and Great Britain in, the, in June of 1940, he was hoping for another repeat of World War I. A, deadlock trench occupying four years worth of all the Western nations grinding themselves to bits while Russia got stronger and stronger and stronger and was able to either defend itself or as some authors will contend, some historians, which I partially agree with, would it launch its own offensive and bring the workers paradise to the rest of, uh, of, the, European, uh, of the European continent. So you can imagine his great dismay two months after Germany attacked uh, France and Great Britain the French give up, the British were forced off the continent at Dunkirk, and Germany was free to do whatever it wanted to do, basically militarily, in Europe. And uh, the one thing the Russians really had going for them, other than sheer size and a large military, was an excellent and first-rate intelligence and spying program in most of the Western nations, including the United States. Um, when Stalin began to receive reports that in the summer of 1940, in the spring of 1941, that all the German units, not all, a good number of them I should say, but most of the mechanized and panzer divisions were on the move. And he'd say, where were they going? Let me know where they're going. And they were heading east. Because remember in December of 1940, Hitler gave instructions to prepare for the invasion of the Soviet Union. Part of that was to the... Uh, the high command, the OKW, high, Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, uh, started re relocating all those units into central Poland. Well, of course, um, the Russian spy apparatus was reporting this to uh, Moscow, um, and Stalin said, uh, no, it's, it can't, pop, can't possibly be. That's the last thing I want to hear is an aggressive Germany sitting on a border which I barely have been occupied almost a year, a year and a half before. But the messages came and back continued. The Germans are building up. They're increasing their forces here. And all of them are almost mechanized. That's the, the, big, threat, the big threat that he was afraid of. The Germans had a great excuse and reason when the Foreign Minister Molotov approached his uh, German equivalent, uh, Foreign Minister Ribbentrop. And he said, why are you bringing your uh, forces on our, on our, oops, I was told not to do that. Why are you bringing your forces on our border that uh, I thought we were friends and allies? And the really good excuse was, well, we need to move them away from the prying British reconnaissance planes and into central Poland 
their aircraft can't reach us. And we're practicing uh, maneuvers for the eventual occupation of England. They didn't, that, I mean, it sounds great if you're not a Russian or a German, but the Russians didn't buy it. They knew from even the earliest days of Hitler's writings in Mein Kampf that uh, Germany and its quest for living space or Lebensraum, and Hitler said that space can only be found in the East. Well, you would figure occupying half of one of the largest nations in Europe, Poland, even if you only have half of it, would be plenty of room for the young and new Germany to grow. But uh, with Hitler's aggressive ambitions, that was, and not only that, but to kill the finally last, you might say, um, genie in the bottle that he needed to do was, you know, the, the source of, of international communism, and that rested in, in Russia. So, with the buildup and the plans completed, Germany became an aggressive nation to its former ally, and in June 22, 1941, launched the largest land operation in modern military history, Operation Barbarossa, in a 3 